Hey folks, this is Todd Colburn with your Aerospace Structure Series. This little video is at the request of one of my students. I just gave what I felt was the best lecture I ever gave on effective wits. And she asked for another video. Because she said she and some other students are a little confused. So let's clear this up. So we saw for effective width, we're talking about a fastener. The fastener may be shown, it may be shown by its center line like this. What we're talking about is any kind of uh, stringer-like material or cross-section or any cross-section that is attached to another member, specifically when that member is thin and sheet-like. Actually, anytime you're attaching to something else, you can use this equation, but the place where it's most valid is if your thickness is fairly thin. To figure out how much of this acts together, we're talking about a stringer or a cross-section in compression here, and we're talking about one that's fastened to another thin-flanged member or thin web or skin, like we see here. Since this skin is continuous, we recognize if we're in compression, we're not going to be able to use full effective widths or all of the skin, but some of it will act with the stringer. So we're looking for what is the effective width of skin that we can pretend is part of that stringer and ignore all the rest of the skin. This will keep our analysis simple. So with this idea, I gave you three design formulas. We have a preliminary design formula, a early design formula, and a mature design formula. These three formulas estimate the same thing. They're just better and better estimations of effective width. If we're early in the design phase, it is common to use 30T of effective width. What that means is we find out what is the thickness of the thin member we're trying to add to our cross-section. In this case, it's a skin, a thin skin. And we can see what is the thickness of this. It's T. We're going to multiply that by 30. And that gives us the total width of skin that we can pretend acts with that stringer so that the stringer skin combination is a single unit. This is what we're talking about. This is not using the thickness of the stringer itself, as some students seem to think. It is the effect, it is the thickness of the skin itself. We have a stringer. This is a Z stringer. We have thin skin attached to it with a, a rivet or a fastener, and we can assume 30T of skin works with the stringer. Now, if we had a pair of thin stringers attached together, you could go and assume that some effective width of a flange works with it, and in that case, you'd be working with the, the thickness of that, effect, that flange that you're trying to add in. That T that we're using is the thickness of the member we're trying to figure out whether it works with this stiffener, okay? So 30T is a common design formula. That means 15T on one side of the fastener and 15T on the other side of the fastener. This formula actually comes from plugging in 2024 T3 properties into the equation that we saw, the more detailed equation that we saw back in the last slide, actually, this... Uh, uh, with the uh, our early design formula, okay? So, uh, so it's actually approximate, but if we know nothing but the thickness of the skin, this is a great way to estimate what the effective width will be appropriate. Later in the design, we've chosen materials. We can use our early design formula, which means it's the same form, the detailed formula, 1.9t square root of e sub c over fcy, in this case, since we know material, we'll plug in FCY as an estimate of the stringer's load carrying capability and compression. This is a gross simplification and a much better estimation of the compressive capability of the stringer itself would be FCC, which is what we're going to use for the mature design equation. So we use 30T if we're early in the design phase. We only know about skin thickness. We use FCY in the second equation, if we have materials selected, but we may not have done the work to calculate crippling allowables or cross-section dimensions and things. And later on, once we have figured out what stringer we're going to use, what it looks like, how they're attached together, we can use the mature design relation, which uses 1.9 T squared of E sub C over FCC. 
Now remember in these equations, in all of these equations, T is the thickness of the skin or thin web that you're trying to add to the stringer or the other cross section. E sub C is also the uh, compressive modulus of the skin or thin web that we're trying to add to our cross section. FCY and FCC are actually for the stringer itself, not for the skin. They're for the stringer. In that early design phase, assuming we've chosen stringer properties, we would use its FCY. If you haven't chosen stringer properties yet, but you've chosen skin properties, you might just assume that the stringer is going to be the same as the skin and use the FCY of the skin. But that is another approximation that really requires the stringer FCY or the stringer FCC. Once again, these three equations, while they're the ones used most commonly in industry, these apply anytime we have a fastener attaching a cross section to a thin web or skin, and it's not at the edge of a panel. There's no close edge. It's basically continuous skin attaching continuously to stringer after stringer after stringer. Okay, now what happens if we're at the edge of a panel? Uh, if we're at the edge of a panel, then we use this equation. This equation results from going back to the basic buckling equation we started the lecture 19 with and plugging in 0.43 for the edge condition for a simple free panel. That gives us a total effective width for the last fastener near the edge, WE, of this value. It changes out instead of 1.9, we have 0.62. This actually is the total effective width about that fastener. Okay, let's look at this a bit further to make sure we understand how it works. Okay, so if we look further at that edge of the panel, then we see, all right, we just looked at that equation. And we saw that this is the effective width at the edge of the panel, the total effective width from the edge of the panel to the other side of the fastener, okay? And if you were to plug in that same 2024 T3 properties into this equation, you'd get about 10T for preliminary design. So that means we're using 30T for preliminary design for any fastener, unless it's at the edge of a panel, in which case we're using 10T total effective width. Got that? Okay. So just to reiterate what we talked about in the last video as well, we're using, if we have multiple, if we have a fastener near the middle, we have our three equations we choose from our preliminary design, our early design, and our mature design equation. If we have multiple fasteners, we have to be careful that we don't overlap our effective width assumption. Our effective width equation will be valid for the the effective with outside of the outermost fasteners, but it may not be effective for the more inner fastener. For example, let's say we have a fairly thick skin and the effective widths for the two fasteners overlap in the region between the fasteners. You see how this overlaps there? What this means is if we just say, well, we've got two fasteners, each one has W effective, we just add those together two times that W effective, we would end up double counting for that middlemost piece. That would be complete nonsense. So what we need to do is take care to evaluate the spacing between the fasteners against the effective width calculation. You'll notice in this case, if we have the effective width on the leftmost fastener, and the effective width on the rightmost fastener, we're worried about them overlapping. And so for them not to overlap, we need to make sure that there's enough room in there. That's like a total W effective. That would be the most that could be between the fasteners. If you use this little design equation, this can keep you from over double counting for that. So the total effective width for this stringer with two fasteners would be half of the effective width for the leftmost fastener, half of the effective width for the rightmost fastener, and then if you take the minimum of the fastener spacing and the effective width, and add that those other, to those other two values, that will ensure that you don't double count. So that means you've got half the effective width over here, half the effective width over here, and you have 
uh, the appropriate amount of effective width between either another effective width, which means two half effective widths, or the total spacing, depending on which one's smaller. Okay. Now, if you saw that on our our other picture for picture C here, figure C, we now have three fasteners. So what we'd have is half the effective width for the leftmost fastener, half the effective width for the rightmost fastener outside the fastener. And then between the first and second fastener, we have this first minimum of that spacing and W effective over two. And for the rightmost fastener, you'd have the minimum of that spacing and it's W effective over two and so on. If you have more fasteners, you just add more minimum terms in your equation. So that is basically how this is done. Uh, if you watch that 19 video and then watch 19b, this video, that should clarify the usage of those equations. Enjoy.